guys, I am Chris Kaler and I'm Angry Foss from Kyojin and today we are back again you guys with the fall of the house of Asha. Asha, Asha. <laughs> episode 2. Yes. So, uh, I don't first have title. <laughs> Sorry. Well, first episode was something. Yes, we oh, got introduced yeah. to the Usher family. Uh, the father, Roderick, and his sister, Madeline, are at the head of this big pharmaceutical company. Mm -hmm. uh, Roderick has six children from five different mothers. He says his gate is always open and stuff, but that doesn't mean that they're a happy family. They pretty much all hate each other, and mm -hmm. all they have in sight is the money, the inheritance, the company. They gotta be overachievers to please daddy and be close and stuff so they can get more. Yeah. And uh, now they are, well, basically we're in the present where he's confessing because all of his children died in the last two weeks. Yes. After all, all six of them. Yeah. After, during, a, you know, uh, uh, during court when the, the, the guy's talking to, the lawyer. Perry. Yeah, Perry. Yeah. Uh, he said basically that there was an informant in the family. Who had you know a lot of dirt, so they kind they kind of all started looking at each other, and the dad offered fifty million dollars to the, the the kid who basically finds the informant. So he basically wished them good hunt. Yeah. So they're all about to fight. They're all about to not. I don't know if they're they're gonna kill each other, but they're they're all gonna die anyways. So we'll see what happens. Uh, and mm -hmm. the dad is also, you know, he has a lot that happened in his past. He's being hunted by this woman that he met before called Vera. We think it might be an entity that kind of offered the siblings success in exchange for payment later and the payment is now. I'm pretty sure that that's the devil and he's just sold his soul. Or it's a metaphor for that, but we'll see. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much it. So we gotta find out who's the informant. My theory is that there is no informant, but if there is one, right now my eye is on the grandchild. Uh, Lenore, no, I don't remember her name, but uh, the, the kid was like, oh, an informant is that, and a mole is that, and she was like, oh, they, they'd have to be pretty brave Oh, you think that might be, oh, maybe. Maybe, because she's the only one alive. Yeah. I don't know, it's my theory for now, but we'll have to see. It was only the first episode, so let's jump in this second one and see what happens next. Okay. Don't forget to subscribe, you guys, if you want to see more of these episodes, and check out our Patreon for the full-length reactions. In the meantime, let's go. Turns out there are multiple complaints about this drug trial. So He's been on their case since morning, back in the day. Since 79. Five graves exhumed in the last four weeks. Five corpses missing. All people who were part of that drug trial. To hide the clues? So is that what they did? Oh, man. So it was dirt on his hands, maybe? Yeah. The people in charge of making us healthy make us sick. We fleece the poor, promote the racist, let the demons run amok this world needs changing i agree we are a broken society yeah i guess it's still the same today <laughs> accountants with carpal tunnel kids with sports injuries that docs prescribe them ligadone fast forward a year they're shooting up heroin behind dumpsters I, i'm not responsible if people abuse ligadone you knew it was highly addictive well uh, money speaks anyway louder you wanted more than the hundreds of millions you were pulling before ligadone hit the market how much money would make you say we did it they wanted to change the, the world we so we are here to talk about what right oh, there yeah. my son prospero the one with the so nice frederick love. told me before the end he thought barry was your informant was he because it really doesn't matter now. Not since I killed him. Are you saying that was somehow your fault? Perry was the first of my children to die. Yeah, pretty much all the kids you know how that blamed happened. him first, so... The first thing you have to understand about my son is that he was, if nothing else, crazy. Okay. <laughs> He's living in the excess, right? He's from a rich family of overachievers. And he's the youngest? He's the youngest. Sorry, I'm late. I got <clears throat> hit by a truck. He's kind of rebelling and he's dressing this, like he's rebelling too. He doesn't want to conform. a collection of condemned yeah. Fortunato testing facilities that are not compliant. Worse, leaking toxins into the groundwater. We found evidence of buried toxins. Heavy metals including arsenic, benzene, mm. chromium, mercury, and lead. Yeah, they don't give a shit. Who gets the highest, no matter the consequences? If it's found in violation, 
and we are legally liable for that property. We'll bring to code or we will demolish it as soon as possible. If this one is ours, I want to see it. It's perfect for this idea I <laughs> can, had. Can I talk to you? Don't know how business works, so right? Says, I think no wonder they think he's the informant. Like, he would do that just because he doesn't know what he's getting himself into. Yeah. By ignorance. We he thinks about himself you know, and only himself. responsibility to the environment very seriously. Uh, and we are aligned with you in our mutual goal of compliance. He's a perfect you know puppet, the first son. Fuck. Seven. Weren't you supposed to demolish those buildings six or seven months ago? I know it's you, you little fuck. Oh. No wonder you're so comfy talking around the feds. I'm gonna serve you up to dad on a silver platter. You don't discuss that in the building, Frederick. I'm only here because dad said so. And you're only here because my father fucked a blackjack dealer on a yacht in Cannes 25 years ago. I knew ago. there was gonna be some grievances so about that. that yeah. the Fucking bastard. But I mean, the dad is not really a good role model because he cheated on his wife multiple We're times. Well, who's to say he but, didn't remarry with no, someone else? Mm -hmm. the, 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 no, no, he, he calls them bastard. Doesn't mean the others are bastards. And you won't know where it is unless you're on the list. And the list is fucking exclusive. It's a pop-up club. The pop-up club. Five grand a door per party you attend. Where I want the thing is, it would work. It will. You know, the more expensive, the more rich people want to be there. Yeah. The orgy starts at midnight. <laughs> Actually, make that 20 grand. Maybe 20 grand. Man, it should be masquerade. Oh, people will go for sure. I think he op I mean, does he have time to open a club before he dies? <laughs> He's the first oh, one to die. He might die at the party then. Red Death? What well, in she can still make it. Hey, Lord, gentlemen. No, what? No. Hey, Vic, don't just. Don't, can. It's interesting, but this makes me Names so... Names they do, they have. Uh, Victor. Victory, like... Victory. Okay. Prospero, like, it prosperity really or something. Nothing about yeah. this. It's all right, this week we're gonna lose funding in six months. And if she lived, the whole trial would be poisoned. <gasps> because they do The last thing we should be talking about right now is human trials. Human trials, how much longer She's is this going to take? She's desperate to, you know, prove right. that she can yeah, do it, so, so she kind of jumps over, subject, so uh, you know... Steps, steps, thank you. I need this viable in humans. And a lot sooner. Like six months. What? Okay, why? You let me worry about why and you worry about results. If we're not going to make those dates, if my 200 million is coming up snake eyes, you'll tell me, right? I mean, yeah, of course. Look at me. I need this to work. <laughs> There's too much pressure. Yeah, You're still thinking victory is the informant? Maybe. It could be Perry, a little psycho, but there's something that stinks about Vic's clinical trial. I don't believe it's any of them. I'm gonna say it again. Yeah. What did she do to you? I'm sorry, what was that? Yeah. And she has a grudge against yeah, Victorine. Why? This is over the top. I don't know if she would be the informant because, like, we see her alone, surrounded by employees and stuff. She, she would be less intense about the hunt if she was the informant. Okay. And I'm he doesn't we get care. On the dance floor. So it's definitely not him. And solve some padding up in here and uh, turn on those sprinklers, make it rain. He's just desperate to prove himself. Nobody so there's no the way to betray the family. The How's the water? That sounds well, like tragedy. I don't know. Yeah? Like, do you think we saw that there's water leaking? Do you think it's gonna, like, electrocute a lot of people? Oh, like, carry? I can call the city, see if we can time the municipal line. He's gonna jump over steps. Try ass party. You know, these testing facilities need their own filtered water. You guys saw those tanks on the roof. No, the I'm sure they're with chemicals Boys in it. Or something. No, 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 cool. no. Well, you can do that by tomorrow night? Yes. Whoever has the gold makes the... What was that? Uh, sorry, it's sorry, an old, old joke. How would he know that? <laughs> oh, How would he know right there? <gasps> I know, I know. I'm sure that they burn like acid or something. It? He did say that there was a reason why these buildings needed to be destroyed. Yeah. And the cover is coming oh, close to the king oh, standing on a green tower looking down over his subjects. Remember? Yep. Acid. Oh, really? Burnt. Yep. This little peasant in the back. He pipes up. Whoever has the gold makes the. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. It's going to oh, be brutal. Shit. But all of them at the parties are so right. It depends, unless he falls into the the, the tank or something. 
Although we have seen in the thumbnail that there is going to be a party, so... Have you ever heard of Catacil? It's a hereditary form of vascular cognitive impairment. Before it kills you, it causes symptoms very much like dementia. Is that what he was told he has? It can even cause hallucinations. And that would explain what he's seeing? There's no cure, you know. A five-year prognosis on the outside. The only <laughs> hope is preventative, like, say, an experimental oh, new okay. smart heart. That's why he pushes his daughter. Yeah. You remember Grizz, don't you? That unfortunate cemetery business. Grizz, the original gangster, you might say. All of this really starts there. In that office with Rufus Griswold. Serious pain. You're on opioids. Everyday pain, you're on acetaminophen. But for the gulf in between, well, pff, you're fucked. Let me introduce you to Ligadone. Oh, you made it into Before little bucks. No side effects. Non-addictive. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. a, a serious injury, sure, but also for chronic, mild, even temporary pain. When it's this too good to be true. Been about, we all, all of us, no pain. Yeah, really it's drug really that can do both. The little the and the big. Pill in history. Nope. And this little pill is a world without I see the pain. why they did that, considering yeah, where they come from. They that you just need to change the dose about it. Spencer, we get this to market and we usher in a new world because this world needs changing. It's crazy that the, the lawyer like is saying the same thing. They are saying exactly the same thing, but they're, they're at odds with each other because their way of doing things is completely different. How many people need that cardioverter defibrillator we spend millions developing? What, 100k a year tops? A strong universal non-addictive painkiller we're talking a thousand times that selling easy. dreams but it's bullshit the numbers which fortunato won't just be a medical care company fortunato will be a miracle fortunato will be a doom fall guys this is how you change the world fuck that tiny little man in his big office with his tiny little ideas we are going to change the goddamn world there's no such dreams. thing as a step back you go forward rufus griswold is going to help us go forward or we're gonna go right through him and leave him in pieces behind us she's intense <laughs> i do wonder if roderick is gonna like try to kill madeline because she's the one who kind of pushed him towards that and now he's got nothing maybe he said she was in the basement and in the story he buries her <laughs> i'm throwing a party tonight and then at midnight the rain's gonna fall and we're all gonna dance and fuck and feel more alive in five minutes than Freddy ever will. You should come. You feel like me? You know, you feel in prison, in this marriage? Just let loose. If she comes and she dies too. Oh. I am thinking a romantic dinner tonight. He can serve you food, romance, an intimate dinner. I mean, I had the idea that like she was hiring girls to take care of her husband oh, because good. she's clothes, right? focused on something else, but like she likes to watch. We'll get to that later. Go ahead. How was your day? Like she fantasized I'm sorry. about what they could have. Yeah, like she's dresses like her. Yeah, yeah, she's supposed to be her. That's why the wig and stuff. Kind of like she can't, <laughs> she can't be like that, so she gets off of seeing it happen. Adding more details. We've got failure sent to the staff of the testing facility. Some whispers about an animal that may not have survived an application, but nothing concrete yet. Damn it, Toby. Toby, damn it. You know what we used to call that place, right? Roderick Usher Experimental. His name used to be right there on the sign. Called it Room Morgue. They have three pickups a week. Maybe we look at Kind of like your sister. Well, she gets off of seeing others be intimate. If their brother, their little brother lets loose like crazy, they are... Okay, no, she, she takes... Okay, she takes part. That's one thing, I guess. This isn't really ethical business-wise. Away. Maybe she gets off of the this idea that she's their superior. She's in power. Yeah. Hey, you two. I'm a... So I'm headed out. Yeah. Oh, uh, she's gonna well, die. Yeah, because she wasn't at the What's you know. You do, do you think that maybe someone like locked the door so that they won't be able to get out? We'll see. We'll see. We needed the first death to try and piece together maybe like what's going on. And if it's a final destination moment where someone that doesn't exist turned the valves. In a day, they really, really prepared everything really quickly. <laughs> well, when you got the money to do it, yeah, you can do pretty much everything. 
cameras at an orgy. But I mean, you need to have a certain control of people, I guess. Her dad's a congressman. This guy, he's a draft pick. That's blackmail material, by the way. It is. This is the real business. Blackmail? This party's worth 2.5, but this footage, after the rain starts, it's worth a whole lot fucking more. I'm about to own Dick Wood. I mean, own him. He just wants to fucking get back at them for everything right. that they've done to him. Tongues. They are a product of all the shitty stuff that's been done in this family. <laughs> this is gonna end in a bloodbath, right? Yeah? No, oh, no. That means a lot of important people. Oh. Oh. She was on the roof. Here comes Steph. But who is she, though? I don't think she's... Like, do you think she's really there? Because on the roof... I don't think anyone could have truly been there. Yep. I thought you'd never catch up. Yeah, sh she's the devil, guys. I chose this guest list very carefully, and I have no idea who you are. You can take off your mask, Prospero. She can't be real because she didn't age a day. Oh, <laughs> she's what? a demon. Yeah. Come on, she's a demon. <laughs> Is it everything you wanted it to be? Well, you're about to die, so I hope so. Not yet. Nearly realized is the sweetest. It's better, I promise. In the moment. And in the moment after. Does she, is she talking about death? <laughs> and there's still time to stop it. Things like this have consequences. She's testing them. Not this. There are always consequences. You are consequence, Mary. And tonight, you are consequential. The script is pretty good. <laughs> yeah. We could have had fun, you and me. I've always liked the bad boys. And you bad boys, you always just love me. You are a pretty little thing. She's not, if she's not the devil, I'm gonna be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, if that's how every death occurs, like she gives them a chance to make the right decision and survive, yeah. it's a test that makes it very interesting. And now you know what this what this gives me like it's a vibe of like a ghost oh. ship uh, lock the doors yeah it does look like a, a ghost, ghost ship. ship yeah situation the music is kind of similar too she's she she's saving the staff she just saved the staff yeah yeah the ones that are working there they're not the ones that are indulging. She's trying to save, save the, the wife as well. I hope she leaves. Oh, they're about to die. Come on, girl, just leave. Mm. Oh, she's gonna let it get her. Fuck. Yeah. The envy was too oh. big. And fudge. Oh, no. Oh, fuck. Oh, man. Oh, shit. Oh! Oh! Ah, shit. Holy shit! Well, it's a party people are gonna remember. Oh! Oh! Wash! Wash! Oh, they're still they're alive! So moving. Oh, that's disgusting! So, did you enjoy the moment before and the moment Fuck after? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, your party was rad! Her mask fit with his fate. Yeah. Beautiful boy. She's not enjoying this at all, but... She might not be the devil. Maybe she's death, though. Death, yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell! Mr. Finnegan. Wow, you Fla did really well. Not Finnegan. Huh? Not Finnegan. Flanagan? Yeah. Mr. Flanagan. Dip Flanagan. <laughs> you did really well. Wow, okay. Uh, I wasn't expecting this. Um, okay, so we need to discuss that, that woman. Last episode, we theorized that she was an entity, uh, mm -hmm. like the devil, and they made a pact with her what I mean, to get I... success, and now they're paying the consequences. But like, everything that happened... Let me finish my idea. Everything that happened in this episode wasn't because of her. She was only there to warn him 
kind of, you know, try to save him in a way, but she's not actively doing anything. So she's there to make him realize that, you know, this could have consequence. Like this, are you sure you want to do this? And he decided that, yes, he chose his fate. So yeah, I don't think they made a deal with her anymore. I do like the idea that she's deaf. When they met her back then, I feel like the way she talked, maybe she was already an entity, still an entity. I, th I think she's always been an entity. And she but was just, she saw them make a choice. She talked about choices, resolution and stuff. Yeah. She saw them make a choice and she was in there. Yeah, she, she met them to try and warn them, kind of like what she did here. Kind of, you know, warn them about the path they were going to take. Like, if you make a choice here, she talked about choices. If you make a choice here, uh, you know, uh, no matter how trivial it may seem, it's going to have lasting consequences for the future. So I think she was there to try and push them, at least make them aware of what they were truly doing. And they chose to kind of like uh, Perry, they chose to go forward with their decisions. And now they're going to reap the consequences. But it's all about their choice, their consequences. It's not like there's a demon going after the kids. Although I'm really interested to, you know, find out how the fuck was their acid in those sites. But uh, I mean, you know. they, did, they did say that those properties, they found chemicals in the ground, like really uh, harsh chemicals. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that those tanks on the roof had chemicals in them. And yeah. the fact that they connected those tanks to uh, the water supply for the ex extinguisher is that, is that the correct fire word? Extinguisher. Yeah. Well, fire extinguisher. Yeah. Fire. Yeah. Well, for this, uh, they just went got drenched in acid, basically. He didn't listen, and that's the thing with this character. Like Perry is the type. Like he's the kid who he's too young to truly understand business. I won't call him too young. He's too young. Yeah, he's, he's early twenties. He's, well, he was born in 96, like, okay, early 20s, Come he's on. Uh, he's late 20s then. A, a year <laughs> longer than I am. I know, I know. Come on. But still. The, the, he, that is not too young to listen and try to understand. It just, it doesn't want to understand. It just wants you. No, but he's a product of how his family treated him. Like the youngest, like the the bastard. The bastard of the bastards, basically. They are bastards in this family, by the way, we will make this clear right now. I don't think all of them are bastards. I think mm. some of them are. And he was the one that they really call like the worst of them all. Maybe because it happened, you know, I, I don't know who's the oldest, uh, the youngest after him. But maybe it happened, you know, late, way later and they, they didn't expect that. Maybe mm. like it happened, you know... As a, and it was a betrayal of, of the woman who the Roderick was married to at the time and they hated that. Or maybe it's mm -hmm. just who he is that, that they despise because they're all hardworking overachievers and he's not different. It's just the way he does it is he's, gen, he's a new generation <laughs> compared to the others. Like his way of doing things is yeah. more intense, more free, more the the. Debauchery. It's, it's debauchery like at its finest and I think it's because he feels like they're gonna treat him like this anyway he's kind of locked in this family drama this family vibe that they've got going slash enterprise and he feels trapped he feels caged and you know working the path that his siblings worked before walked before sorry mm -hmm. is not working for him because his ideas don't work and he doesn't share the same passions as the others the same uh, dreams the same maybe talents even though he's he is you know he's intelligent in his own way he's got ideas well, th there is a market for entertainment companies yeah yeah it's just that he doesn't fit with the family work the family you know uh, company compared to the others who really uh, are you know especially like Frederick for example he's a puppet of his father like he's kind of a clone uh, it's he kind is, of funny like his sister wanted to call clone. him Frederick and yeah well, okay, I think it fits because I think he's trying so hard to be just like his dad, like the next mm -hmm. Roderick. Uh, he's, you know, he learns the, the company's uh, uh, catchphrases. He, he, he tries to know everything inside and out. He tries to fit with the company's uh, way of doing things. He's not original at all because he's trying so hard to be just like his dad. Uh, which could be like a result I mean, of him being the first son. He does have big shoes to fill. Well, but that I think that's because he's the first son. Yeah. Like the pressure on him is different than that of the others. 
who were, you know, they saw him and they're like, oh, okay, well, he's already doing that. So I'm not going to be uh, copying him. I'm going to branch out. So they all have that, that need to prove something to their dad, but it doesn't mean that they prove it the same way. But Rod, Fra, Frederick, <laughs> Frederick, I think, <laughs> is doing it by trying to be like his dad yeah. as much as possible. And you, so, so that's the first one. And you think the youngest one, he couldn't be more different. And he doesn't fit in those shoes the way his siblings do. So I think he tried to get out of that cage by being like this, by uh, living his life in the most extreme way possible, live as much as possible. Because mm -hmm. when we saw it with the others, like they all are in need. Their their sexual drive, their, their interests, their fantasies, I... they're all intense in certain ways. I don't think it's much about their sexual fantasies, but much about the fact that they are need to be in control. Yeah, but that's part of uh, no, no, it's I, a fantasy no, too. No, I know it, it is a fantasy, but I mean, business-wise, I don't think that they, are, they, are, they have much leeway with their job and with what they've been dealt in life. And I mean, by doing it, like I mean, uh, Tamarine, <laughs> Ta Taini basically, she, uh, they are a girl pretty, pretty much each week. And she's so her thing is to yeah. see a potential scenario in which she and her husband can just live life, be happy together. She be she is being loved by him. But then, instead of living it, she likes to see it. Yeah, maybe because she doesn't want the emotional baggage that comes with it, and she doesn't want to be the, uh, vulnerable by opening up. So she'd rather create this scenario where another girl plays herself and lives it, and she watches and she gets off of it. So I think, yes, it is. A, with her, it's definitely about control. With, um, I don't remember her name, but uh, the sister with the, the gray hair. Yeah. Uh, it's it's also kind of like, for her, it's kind of like it's power. Uh, not so much control, but maybe in a way, like she enjoys, you know, sleeping with, first of all, excess, again, two partners. Mm -hmm. uh, same with N Napoleon. Yeah. Uh, he's got... He's got a boyfriend, but he cheats with other people. Mm -hmm. It's they are all similar in the way that they need more. Yeah. Always. It's just that Perry was never, the one never satisfied. Yeah, but I mean, they are a family that needs more. We saw it with Madeline. Like it's never enough. We always need to go forward, better, up, you know, higher. Do you think that she got rid of the first wife? I have the feeling she, that she, she could have done it. Did it seem that she really liked her much? I don't know. Well, we'll talk about her later, but. It's a family of people that always are left wanted. And I mean, it doesn't, it makes a lot of sense. Like they don't show love. They don't know what true love is. Like they were, I don't, they, it's all about the company. Like the father is never really involved with his kids. It's all, it's always about show me what you can do yeah. and not like, oh, let me love you. Let me, you know, hang out with you, play with you, stuff like that. No, it's never about feelings. It's always about what you can do. So they don't know that. So yeah, of course their need for love is going to be extreme because they don't have it so whenever they go search for it it's, it needs to be bigger bigger and so perry being the last one not only does his father not respect him his sister his siblings don't respect him they call him the bastard uh they push him away his ideas are not accepted and stuff he's the fuck up of the family so not only does he have that initial need for love because he doesn't have it but for him it's even worse because he doesn't get uh gratification from his from his dad and from anyone else in the family really yeah so his thing was excess but yeah when you you lash when you go always further and you don't put limits to yourself and you don't pay attention to the consequences of your action yeah you get but to I mean, face that it is true that we've seen a, a little bit with uh victorine and with him the fact that she wanted to uh go over uh, some step because she wanted to have result right away. Oh, that's the need to please the dad. Yeah. If the dad wants something, they they need to please him. I think all the siblings kind of have that. Maybe Perry was the least intense with that because he's already used to being told no. So when he was told no once again, like no, your idea doesn't work. Mm -hmm. he, he was like, fuck it, I'm gonna rebel and do my thing anyway. Yeah, but uh, when he got told that, oh, we don't have water access or we cannot do this go further come ah oh, just the things come we're gonna take this but it makes it wouldn't make sense like low-key it's just that he didn't pay attention at the meeting i think he wasn't listening when they talked well, about the chemicals and stuff he was always he was selfish in a way that 
He didn't. He doesn't care about the company. He doesn't care about his siblings because they don't care about him. And it's all about his needs and what he wants, what he wants to do. So in that moment, he was just thinking about his idea and he didn't, he didn't listen to a thing they said. And when it came to the problems at the party, his party needed to work. So he was willing to just do like his sister, fuck the, fuck the, fuck the steps and just try to, you know, have the, take have a, a solution no take, matter take what. Take a shortcut, yeah. Yeah, don't look into problems uh, and, and, you know, consequences and stuff. He didn't care. But he was given a choice and I think that makes the mm -hmm. Red Woman slash uh, uh, Vera mm -hmm. very interesting because, yeah, I think yeah. it's a, it's going to be that maybe for every sibling. I love the fact that we saw her uh, talking, well, whispering to the staff who went, in, who went in partying with the the debauchery and she told them to to leave those that were there not because they wanted to be there yeah. but because they the, the, this uh, is it me or they seem to be some sort of a uh, control like they, they just uh, well she's an just, entity yeah. so she was there it's kind of like you your conscience is telling you to leave yeah. she whispered the words and and it's up to them if they listen mm -hmm. and the wife didn't yeah she was she, like she made a choice she got tempted and i think in that moment she was really uncomfortable but the idea of living this was there. The idea of exper experiencing with this freedom was I mean, interesting because she lives also in this family. Mm -hmm. uh, and I mean, she probably feels like she's caged too. So it's not so much that she... It, it wasn't her idea or anything, but the brother is a really, uh, uh, was a really sweet talker. And to make her feel desired, to make her feel like she could let loose and stuff like that that was appealing and so she chose to stay but i mean there's nothing wrong with it but you need to live with the consequences of your choice and she's she, not she's she not did. judging what no, yeah no, vera was no, not no. judging at all that's the thing like she's like okay there are consequences are you willing to live with them well yeah, okay. I, i'm not judging either you, no, no, I, I'm no, you, I'm... you do you <laughs> But yeah, what, what I was saying is, uh, I remember a movie, I think it was with Keanu Reeves and Al Pacino, when uh, Ke Al Pacino was the devil, <laughs> and I think he appeared in red or something, but the fact that she was all in the, uh, on the bed in the red light, like, she seemed like a uh, demonic entity to well, me. Well, you know, she I, reminded I think me I, of the I, Forbidden I, Apple. Yeah, she the forbidden fruit and stuff like she was the embodiment of what he wanted, which was the uh, unavailable, the 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 risky. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't even. I, I, there's a word I'm looking for, but you know the the excessive forbidden. Well, forbidden. No, I just said forbidden yeah. fruit. But anyway, you get the point. Yeah, and she was the embodiment of what he was looking for, mm. what he desired. Yeah, but that's the thing, though. Like I said, and Lucifer, he's he's not. Is not uh, the devil is not forcing you to do bad stuff. Mm. What he does is that uh, he lets you uh, reveal your inner desire and you act upon it. Well, that's so, basically what happened here. So yeah. she could still be the devil. To she say, could, but I mean, I love the idea that she might be the devil or that she just death. Or and both. Like she, I mean, well, <laughs> yeah, she, she could be both. But yeah, if she is the devil and she's just giving you a choice, what do you want to do? Do you want to go for it or do you just want to think about it? And that, thinking about all of that, that makes sense why the dad says he killed his kids, or at least he killed Perry, just because we don't know about the others, but I'm guessing it's going to be the same pattern because he's the one that made this possible. He's the one that followed his sister and created this, this need to do better, bigger, and, and, you know, go further and higher all the time. This, this kind yeah. of, this kind of, challenge to always prove themselves and he's the one that also needed to do that like he considering they grew up with sickness and with uh they were not acknowledged by their dad and they saw the consequences on their mom i think that he's desperate for a way to control his life a way to show that he can do it show that he's not a fuck up that he deserves to be someone because he was always cast uh, cast out and for uh, forgotten um, and there's also maybe the need to be the savior. Like, I wish I could have done this for my mom. I wish I could have brought up a solution. So now I'm creating this solution for the rest of the world. Except that this desire to get results makes him forget steps. You know, it makes him say that, oh, there's no consequences, no addiction, but there yeah. are. <laughs> makes him lie about this. Makes him also offer something great because yeah. he wants results. 
even though he knows it's not what it what he says it is, you know, he knows that there are steps that he's not taken here and he's basically saying a nightmare covered in a dream skin. Yeah, and he made that also a reality for his kids. So he created the atmosphere, he created the vibe for them, the setting for them to all die because of the consequences of their desires, their actions. So I, I just, I can't wait to see how the others are gonna <laughs> die, but it's all gonna be, I'm pretty sure it's all gonna be. Uh, like I wasn't a, expecting that. Though. That was brutal. That was brutal. That was great. And uh, speaking, I, I wanted to speak of Madeline really quickly too. I, I don't want to say the wrong term, but is it me or when we saw her in the past, she seemed like really cold and de uh, de detached from just emotions or connect she connections. She's a woman right? on a mission, I feel. She's uh, very intelligent and sometimes with high uh, intellect, you have apathy, like you don't get, well, not apathy, like, lack of empathy. Yeah, uh, there, a little bit, not sociopath or something. Maybe, you know? maybe, but then again, she's like, knowing where she came from, her mom was a bit, she wasn't a perfect mom, you know, she kind of had to take over a little bit, take care of the family. She's the one who, took her family, her brother, basically, and just brought him up. And I yeah. think she's the one that kept pushing him. So whenever his her brother kept, he found a wife, he started a family, she doesn't really see the need in that. She'd rather, like, she, she doesn't seem to have kids or anything. Like, it's all her brother. Because he's desperate for family, he's desperate for legacy in this way. But for her, she'd rather develop. Immortality the, the thing. Is an immortality. Or the, yeah. Yeah, but, she yeah. wants to do things herself and I can't help but think that this could be because she literally saw her mom rise from the grave and like uh, Roderick said it best last episode but his mom right before death the last thing she did was kill a powerful man. I think this, this statement was empowering for Madeline and she's she's trying to kind of do the same like even if I'm reaching death I, I want to still be able to do great things so Keep going despite death, survival, yeah. you just immortality, and this obsession, you know, mixed with you know uh, her intelligence and her desires and stuff. Like, of course, if she meets someone like the first wife, who who is like, oh, um, you know, your ideas have been intense, and don't you? Would you rather just don't you know feel life, enjoy life? And she's like, she's all about the trivial things. It's not trivial, but Madeline thinks it's trivial. She doesn't respect her. She she thinks she's not on the same level as her and she would be judging and pushing her down. She'd rather shut her up and just, just be like, you don't need her. Tell, tell her brother that she, you don't need her in, her in your life. Like you, I'd, I'd rather you focus on me and my ideas and our dream. Our mission. Which is kind of why I'm thinking maybe if Roderick is feeling desperate and like he feels like everything is their fault and stuff. Like I'm wondering if he's going to try and kill his sister by the end. But I mean, you know, she is... A little bit obsessed with death, and she just um, had something imported from Egypt. When you know the thing that he used to go up the brain, make goo, and take it out. Well, yeah. uh, I saw a koshesh, koshesh was it? Uh, the sword used uh, by the soldier. You know the one that is a little bit like uh, in a curve, and Roderick's uh, office. So maybe he's gonna be the one to take out his sister. But then again, maybe she uh, she already created a way to stay after death. Maybe she's already dead. Well, the story, <laughs> he buries her. Mm -hmm. I, I need to re re check it out again because I don't remember the details like I said last episode. But she she's sick and he, he, he basically buries her, but he knows she's still alive. So she, he buries her alive, kind of like to kill her. And she comes out of the grave and takes him down with her. They destroy the house together by going after each other in that way. So his, uh, I think he might. Well, if I mean, we're going this way. If we think like, literally, they are the pillar of the yeah 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 Usher house. And I think and the kids are dead anyway. But <laughs> I think that the last one standing. What's possibly happening now is that he called the lawyer to confess not only to you know what he set in motion for his kids, but maybe he killed his sister. But maybe she's not completely dead, well, and I mean, she's gonna come out and bring him down. It is that she was in the basement. Maybe she is. She is buried in the basement. Well, he said she was in the basement, but yeah, I think he he killed her, and he's there to confess. Maybe he killed her. Yeah. Cause like, we'll see, we'll see. But he is dying. That I have to. I have to uh, 
take it literally what he said about uh, the, the illness. This is probably what he was told last episode. Why, why did it result ASAP from his daughter? Yeah, so he's dying anyway. And uh, although the... No, he received the news before the meeting where, you know, you need to really find a, a solution there. So maybe he learned just, yeah, you're going to die from this. So let's find a solution so I can still live. But now he's just accepted that fuck off. Like there's nothing to live for anyway. <laughs> But maybe the young Roderick, who kind of had this this idea of a family, kind of wanted to have kids and stuff, like maybe this guy is now seeing the consequences of his actions, and he's 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 decided to destroy everything. Time to pet a tab. Yep. Oh, it's so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I I don't know for you guys, but so far, like it's two episodes so far. I'm really loving it. I'm loving it too. I don't know, uh, compared to Hunting of Hill House and Hunting of Blind Manor, we'll have to see the where end. it's gonna be, but at the end of it, I'm gonna tell you which one's gonna be at my top from the three series. Oh, You're there's also see. Midnight Mass? It's, a, it's on the side. On the side? On the side. Okay. I really enjoyed Midnight Mass. No, I did too! I okay. did too, but this is like a show about like supernatural entities. Well, Midnight like Mass was old, about vampires. Old houses and stuff. Okay. The vibe is, is yeah, more intense. It's a different vibe. In any case, thank you guys so much for watching this with us. If you want to see the next episodes, the next two episodes, yeah. right away, they are on Patreon already. You can check them out. The link is in the description below. And if you don't want to, well, the next that will be on YouTube next week. So we're going to see you then. Bye.